let's get into the message this morning. This morning is, grace is sufficient for you. God's grace is sufficient for you. Now, this is probably one of the most important topics that you can learn outside of faith. But I'm going to teach you this and I'm going to help you understand what this is all about. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9, remember Paul was dealing with an issue. And he comes before God and he says, God, take this thing away from me. And God's response actually sounds a bit strange. Okay? And this is what God said to Paul. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rash, uh, rather boast, sorry, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. So what does that mean? Let me first help us. The word grace is misunderstood. We think grace is mercy. Right? They are two different things. The Bible says you come before God's throne, the throne of grace and mercy. It's very important that you understand the difference. Mercy is when you've done something wrong and you get unmerited favor. You know, you get this undeserved treatment that you should not get. That's mercy. Grace is God's supernatural ability to perform what you meant to do on this earth. So what does that mean in practice? Like Paul makes a statement, he says, I have a grace to be an apostle. I have a supernatural ability to do what God called me to do. And every one of us have got grace in our lives. Every one of us have got supernatural ability to perform what God has called us to do. Let me give you an example. How many of you know that, that if you are a real practical person, all right, you can build things. You were born with a gift to build things. If you're a pianist or a musician, you were born with the gifting to understand music and hear sounds and get your tone right. If you're a mathematician, you know, you've are, you are got a natural gifting for mathematics and sciences. Now, those are not just natural giftings. Those are graces that have been given to you. So Paul goes to God and he says to God, God, I got this issue. Take this issue away. And God responds and says, no, you already have the grace. You have got to turn this thing around from you. And this is the exact thing that happens in our lives. God has given us grace. God has given us supernatural abilities to turn things around in our lives. We have got supernatural gifting, supernatural anointing, supernatural callings that are there to turn things around and to change what needs to be changed. And so therefore in Paul's life, God did not say, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to take this away. And now look, there's a lot of discussion on what that thorn in his flesh was. You see me, but nonetheless, whatever it was, God said, I'm not taking it away. My grace is sufficient for you. My empowerment in your life is sufficient for you to take care of it. I don't need to change it. I don't need to do anything from my side. It's for you to apply what I've given you. And so therefore, saints... I need us to understand that when we come to communion, we must know that we have the grace to do whatever God has called us to do. Now remember this, no matter what circumstance you personally find yourself in, okay, whatever circumstance you find yourself in, I want you to understand that the grace that God has given is supernatural. It's an ability to be able to do what God has called you to do. Amen. So as we come and we celebrate communion today, and remember also that it's Palm Sunday today. So I want to just uh, celebrate that across the nation. Right? This is where Jesus Christ was coming into, um, into Jerusalem and they were waving the palms. Okay. And they were celebrating him and saying Hosanna to the king. And that was a symbol of a king coming in. All right, and I want to just let everybody know that from next week, from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'm going to take an extensive teaching. It's not going to just be a five-minute uh, teaching. I'm going to teach on the importance of Easter, what happened. All right, a lot of us remember this from last year, but it's important. I'm going to teach it properly, and I'm going to teach that we get this thing grounded in our lives. Okay, you need to know what happened over Easter. Easter is incredibly important. For us as believers. It's the most important time. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. Resurrection Sunday is probably the most important event. That could ever happen to a believer. Okay. So we'll deal with that thing in depth. 
on, uh, on next weekend over Easter. Okay? But today I want us to celebrate the fact that you have got no limitations in you. You've, God has given you everything to overcome that you need to overcome in this world. Everything can be changed because of the grace, uh, because of the grace that is on your life. That you, God's grace is sufficient. That supernatural ability in your life is sufficient to take care of any need, anything that has happened around you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's take a communion together and let's celebrate on this Palm Sunday. Let us just celebrate Jesus Christ as King. Let us celebrate the fact that He has paid the price. Amen. And we are going to just have an awesome time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you right now that as we come together and we just have the communion together, Father, we thank you that you paid the price for us. Lord, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you are moving by your spirit. Lord, we thank you for a supernatural move of your spirit in our lives. Lord, I thank you for the price that was paid. Lord, that you came and died and rose again for us. And Lord, we thank you for the grace that has been poured out into each one of our lives. Lord, that we have more than sufficient for any, any spiritual need in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that you are in control and that you are moving by your spirit. Lord, I ask you please to forgive us of any wrongdoing, any wrong thought, attitude, motive, intent, action. Lord, we ask you to forgive us right now and to wash us clean as snow. Lord, I thank you right now that as we celebrate Palm Sunday, we celebrate that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And Lord, that you walk in victory. And Lord, that you love us so much. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you right now for a physical healing in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that every single symptom leave our body. We release the power of God from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. And we thank you, Lord, that we are healed by the power of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that the dunamis power just can be released in our physical bodies. And we thank you, Lord, that we are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say, Amen and Amen. Well, saints, I want to pray this morning over the families, over each one of us. As we come up to Easter, I'm going to pray a real anointing to rest on each and every one of us in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray right now that we will understand Palm Sunday. We will understand the fact that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. All right. That he rode in on a donkey. All right, that, he know, that we know that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the peacemaker. He loves us. And that he's got such a, a love for us. And that he wants to bring us into the fullness that he has for us. But remember, he is the king. He is the Lord. And he is on our side in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Lord, I pray for every single family today. I thank you for every individual. Lord, I pray right now that you're going to move by your spirit in a mighty way in our lives. And Lord, that we, as we remember Palm Sunday, we recognize that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that you are the peacemaker and that when you walk in, change, stuff changes in Jesus' name. I pray for peace over each and every household. I pray for your blessing. I pray for your anointing. I pray, Lord, that you're going to lead us, guide us and direct us by your spirit in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now that you are busy doing something uniquely in our lives. And Lord, that you are bringing us to a place of destiny and purpose. And Lord, that we're never going to be the same again in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you right now that you're going to just do a supernatural work in our lives. And Lord, that we're not going to be the same again. And Lord, I pray for every single believer that we will have a revelation of who you are, a revelation of your power, a revelation of your anointing. And Lord, I pray right now that you're going to move by your spirit in every single one of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen.